but it's where I sit and write and the sun is shining even though it's uh, nearly night time here and just beyond um, the immediate group of houses about um, probably less than what you call a block away um, there's just open fields and open countryside so as soon as I open the window I can just hear sheep bleating and this time of year the lambs are calling and um yeah it's just it's a really really rural environment and it's very peaceful very quiet i am one of my favorite if not the favorite characters um i know you're not supposed to have favorite characters just like you're not supposed to have favorite children but um i feel like i've known him a long time because i i studied his particular period of history when I was a, a university student. Um, but yeah, the idea of hearth and home was very, very important for the Anglo-Saxons. And there is a character in the book who gets banished. Sorry if that's a spoiler, I won't say his name. Um, but he sits and he talks and he says he wishes he could stay till the story's end. Because storytelling particularly I mean, in, not in this period, because most were literates, but the tradition of Anglo-Saxon storytelling was always oral. So they were sitting around the fire. I mean, the, the classic poem Beowulf is written down now, but that was a later um, rendering of it. It was a, an oral story. It was designed to be spoken out loud and performed to an audience. And, and that is what they did. And they would gather, especially not evenings like today when it's lovely sunshine, but especially dark winter evenings, the idea of community and coming into the hall and being with your, your, your kith and your kin was so important. And, and the storytelling and the, the telling of riddles as well, some of the, which are quite bawdy. Um, it, it was all part of the, the social gathering, this feeling of belonging. And so the absolute worst thing that could happen to you was to be banished. Um, and there's uh, a poem, The Wanderer, um, who talks about, you know, how miserable he is being exiled. And I so said that the character, one of, one of Alvar's really good friends, gets banished. And for him, it's almost worse than death because he won't see his half, he won't see his home, his fire will go out. You know, it, there's all this sort of um, symbolism, but it's all about belonging and community and there's scenes in the book where the, the children are clamoring for tales and they won't go to bed until they've had a tale. So it's, it's really important to their culture, this idea of, you know, belonging and, and sharing the history and the storytelling. Came from, I mean, there's, there's a, a scene uh, quite early on, I think, where somebody mentions Alva's father and he says, you know, I don't need reminding. I know who my father was. And that's really, really important to him. And obviously he's, he's one of a, a, literally a band of brothers. There were four of them. And, and historically they are all real characters. Um, there was probably a sister as well. But I'm sorry to say, especially as I write so much about the history of women, that I couldn't bring her into the story. So I had to leave her out because her character just wouldn't have had, had anywhere to go if I'd mentioned her but yeah he was part of a big family a big successful powerful family um, and he was up against another big family and they were who they were was really also becoming important in this stage because this is the time when titles were becoming hereditary mm -hmm. uh -huh. not officially but this is what started to happen so Alva um, initially didn't get his father's lands but eventually got them and the family that he's opposed to they are just one after another um inheriting lands from their fathers from their brothers so the power stayed within these big families and that became even more so in the next century so you've got the the mighty godwinsons you know harold godwinson he became king of england briefly so this is this is the time when who you are starts to matter almost as much as what you've got and what you can do. So kinship is, has always been important. I mean, actually, the, the Anglo-Saxon name for the king is Kuning, and it, it, it does kind of mean leader of the kin. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's su supremely important, this, this sense of identity. And I don't think that's, that's something that's changed. As you say, after all these centuries, we still like to know 
who we are, where we came from, you know, who were our forebears, what did they do, where did they live, you know, how, how did I end up living here, did, did grandparents migrate to find work, their stories are really interesting, but when, you know, as a historian, I love reading about people generally, but, but when there's that blood tie, that connection, it really does, it's, it's, a, well, it's interesting, and, and the, um, one of the main characters, female characters in the book, Kata, is half Danish. And, and that's another thing where the, the, the Danish community, it's, we're not in the era of the, you know, the Viking invaders anymore. There was a sort of lull um, and the Danes were living very peacefully side by side with the English and especially in that part of the world and particularly even more so up here. Um, the Norse and the Danish influence, very, very strong. But then you've got people like Kata who is half and half and she sometimes doesn't know quite exactly where she belongs so she's got her her danish mother's voice telling her things in her ears but she's thinking well actually i'm i'm married to an english lord i should be behaving like an Eng english woman a mercia <laughs> so you know there's that she's got that sort of multicultural thing going on with her that she's it does sometimes confuse her because she's not entirely sure who she is so again that's that's important you know you, you do need to know i think we all feel the need to know yeah. who we are and where we come from yeah and stories yeah. that's that's and what it's all about stories. writing stories reading stories hearing stories that just feeds the soul i think so annie what started your love for me um, one of the earliest books I remember reading for myself was actually uh, Jean Plady's yes. um, Castile for Isabella, I think was the first one. And then I, I, I read a couple of others. Um, historical fiction was just always a magnet for me. I, partly I may think because there was a lot of history in the house. My mum was a teacher, um, not a history teacher, but she always had a passion for history. And when I was eight years old, um, we lived in York just for six months and because we, we were between postings my dad was in the forces it was not worth sending me to school so I was homeschooled in York so I just absorbed the history and the culture and yeah I would I remember seeing, I mean, our house was full of books um, my mum actually lives next door to me now and her house is still full of books there were just books everywhere um, and so that that sort of combination of books being readily available and the history all around. Um, and I have actually got one of my most favorite books. And I, I, I dug it out after chatting to you earlier because I, I wonder if I've still got it. And it's, it's this, oh, which is an old oh. ladybird book. And some of the pictures of the historical costumes, I just love the textures. Um, I can just show you. This one. Oh, glorious. Oh, glorious. <laughs> it's just the, the paintings. Are so, sorry, uh, either my or my sister has scribbled on that one. Um, <laughs> this is the one that always sticks in my mind. Whenever I think of this book, and I'm so glad, this is the one that always sticks in my mind. If I can. Oh, yes. The late Victorian oh, yes. lady. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just used to stroke the painting because it felt like you could feel the, the folds of the cloth. Yes. And there was just something yes. so romantic. To me. I, I don't think romantic because I was probably too young to think in those terms, but just the, the beauty of the past and how fabulously people, not, not everybody, obviously, um, but just the, the variety of the costumes and, and of course of an age when I was still really enjoying dressing up, you know, the dressing up box was a real thing. Yes, real so yes, I, it, it was just something, I, yeah, it's, um, history just sort of took over my life from a very, very young age and, and writing stories as well. The, the two just seemed to be such a huge part from such a young age. I love that. I think it I is. I think it is. Uh, my next novel when I got the contract to write my latest nonfiction, um, but I'm finding that, that one sort of takes over the other. Um, all of my fiction thus far has been based on real people. So every character just about, um, with maybe the odd exception, in all four of my novels was real.
-hmm. So, I mean, even if there's a, a named servant in the Chronicles, I will use their name and, and use them as a character. And so for that, you need to do a lot of research. And fortunately, I said my degree was in history, so I, I had a, a little bit of a head start. Um, and I love them both. I think the, the problems are that with fiction, you have to make stuff up. And sometimes that's hard when you're working with, with real life characters, because if, if they weren't where you wanted them to be, that's a bit tricky. Um, fiction, uh, non-fiction, of course, you can't make anything up. You know, and that, that's the hard. I love the research for both of them, but the, the writing approach is different because with fiction, you've got to think first and foremost, it's got to be about the story. Yeah. as we've been yeah. saying um with the non-fiction it's got to be a way of telling the story of real people um without making too many suppositions you know if, if you're going to put forward any kind of theory then you really need to back it up with the facts um so it's a bit of a slower process but i i love them both equally because I, I think at the heart of it whichever i'm doing I'm writing and reading and researching about the Anglo-Saxon people, which is what I love. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. We all love to do, we all love to do what we love. And we do get yeah, distracted. We do get distracted with the Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the rabbit holes that you can fall down is just absolutely incredible. But, uh, but it's all fun, you know, and, and you learn all the time. That's the thing. And it's it's a really good way of remembering that learning for learning's sake is just a wonderful thing. You know, that doesn't have to be. You can find something out. doesn't have to go in your latest book. Um, you don't have to use that fact. But it's just it's just nice to know. I agree. I agree. What was you to inspire? Yeah. I think yeah. it's it's a muscle that needs working. I think you need to read as widely as you possibly can, um, not just in the genre that you've chosen to write in, um, but, but just write every day, uh, even if it's rubbish, but the more you write, the more you work that muscle, the easier it becomes. I think I, I find it particularly difficult after a long layoff to get back into to writing. And I think it's not a question of, I mean, I, I, I'm free to wander the hills and the fells and seek inspiration, but sometimes you just got to stare at the screen or your piece of paper and just get those words out until it starts to, to flow and, and become natural. And it's like anything, practice makes perfect, or we hope it makes perfect. Um, so yeah, just, just, just do it. Whatever you think about, write it down. And it, if nothing else, you'll have a store of, of notes and things that you've noticed that you might one day be able to put into a book. So if, if you're out walking, and I did this a lot for Alvar actually, because the, the changing of the seasons is, is quite a, a, a big thing. If you notice that the, the shadows are really long at a particular time of day, or you know the, the way some, the snow is shimmering, write it down, make a note of what date that was, and then you know, sometime in the future, you might have a character who's in that situation and you can just add a bit of colour that you know has come from the real world. Um, so, yeah, just write, write. Every time you have a thought, write it down. Lovely. Lovely. On those words. On those words. I think we're all in Thank you for sharing your world. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Super. Super. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks.